We are going to start our investigation of the if-else function by creating a sort of artificial condition that's not really the way we'd ever use this, but to sort of illustrate how the function works. So what we're going to do is simply create a Boolean vector. And so a Boolean vector is just simply a vector whose values are either uh, true values or false values represented here uh, as true and false in all caps with no quotation marks. So the first, third, and fourth values are true. The second and third values are false. So we assign that to the Boolean vector. Then we ask what's in the vector and we see here are our five values. So now if we pass this vector into the if else function, each uh, output item is going to be yay if the value is true and what if the value is false. So let's go ahead and try that and we see that the output vector has five values and indeed the corresponding values are yay for true and what for false. So what we can see from this is that it's not really necessary to, for the Boolean to be a condition. It can just simply be a vector of trues and falses. But normally that's not the way we use it. Usually we generate this Boolean here by evaluating some kind of condition. So returning to our example here, let's take a look again at what the situation is. We have, the situation is that we have character strings that are either pass or fail. And the condition that we want to test is whether each of them is the string pass or not. So if we uh, ask the question, is grades participation equal to pass, we see that we get a vector, true, true, false, true, true, false, true where each item corresponds with true corresponding to pass and false corresponding to fail. And that condition evaluates as a Boolean vector. So when we put that condition into the first argument of the if else function, we are essentially creating a vector of true and falses just like we did here manually. And then as each corresponding item is evaluated in cases where it's true, it'll generate a 100 in cases where it's false, it'll generate a 50. So let's try that. And we can see that that did exactly what we wanted. The first two items, which were both pass and both generated trues when we checked the condition, generated 100s in the output of the if else function. The third item, which was fail and generated a false, generated a 50, which is what I asked it to do under the condition when it was false. 